How to use a first aid kit. What your first aid course didn't teach you. Brought to you by firstaidmark.com and American CPR Training. Having a first aid kit is an important part of being prepared for any emergency situation. Keep a first aid kit easily accessible and fully stocked. And remember to replace used and outdated contents regularly. Hi, my name is Nick Ranonelli and I'm here to show you how to use some of the standard contents of a first aid kit. A first aid kit should contain a chemical cold pack, scissors, adhesive tape, disposable gloves, antiseptic wipes, triangular bandages, roller bandages, sterile gauze pads, adhesive bandages, pain relief tablets, antibiotic ointments, tongue depressor, abdominal pad, eye pad, latex-free elastic wrap, and tweezers. You should also have first aid guides for reference. And some first aid kits include a breathing barrier in case resuscitation is needed. Protective equipment. We have two types of gloves, nitrile and vinyl. There's also latex gloves, however, we don't recommend latex due to allergies. Gloves are an essential part of any first aid kit. Use gloves whenever possible while performing first aid. Gloves help to keep a barrier between you and potentially infectious bodily fluids. Use a biohazard bag for any contaminated materials. For broken glass or for needles, a sharps disposal container should be used. Contact your local health authority to learn how to properly dispose of these materials. CPR breathing barriers are used to protect the rescuer when giving rescue breaths. It will help prevent blood, saliva, or vomit from getting into the rescuer's mouth. As you can see, we have a wide variety of breathing barriers, and here's how they're used. A pocket mask is 90% more effective than mouth-to-mouth. -mouth. To use it, simply place the mask over the person's nose and mouth, ensure you have a tight seal, open their airway, and ventilate. Each breath should last one second. For a baby or a child, you can still use a pocket mask. Simply invert the pocket mask so that the point of the barrier is toward their chin, secure, and ventilate. Some types of disposable barriers come complete with non-latex gloves, antiseptic wipes, and the breathing barrier. To use a disposable breathing barrier, simply take the mouthpiece and place it inside the person's mouth. Peel back the plastic, tilt their head back, and then ventilate. Minor cuts and scrapes. For minor cuts and scrapes, follow these first aid steps. Clean, treat, cover, and protect. In the case of minor cuts and scrapes, the first step is to disinfect the area using antiseptics. Here are some types of cleansing wipes that contain benzyl clonium chloride, also known as BZK. Hand sanitizer is critical for disinfecting the rescuer before first aid is given. Castile soap towelettes are a gentle and effective product for cleaning wounds. Alcohol wipes are essential for disinfection and sterilization in first aid care. Povidone iodine is a classic example of an effective antiseptic. You can find povidone iodine in swabs, solution, or swab sticks. Antiseptic sprays are ideal for sanitizing large or small wounds rapidly and easily. Antiseptic sprays are available in both aerosol and pump bottles. Apply an antibiotic cream if the person has no allergy to it. Antibiotics are used for treating cleansed injuries before applying bandages and covering in first aid. Antibiotic ointments come in brand name, single antibiotic, and triple antibiotic varieties. There are a wide variety of adhesive bandages. For smaller wounds, use a simple adhesive bandage that can come in all different shapes and sizes. Adhesive bandages come in plastic, woven, 
and in a variety of sizes, and be sure to choose latex-free. Specialty bandages include elbow and knee, junior, and blue bandages for restaurant and food service. These are easily seen if lost during food preparation. Specialty adhesive bandages include fingertip, knuckle, and a combination pack. The knuckle bandage is shaped like the letter H. A knuckle bandage is placed over the top of the knuckle to treat a typical knuckle cut or scrape. The four adhesive strips are wrapped around the finger above and below the knuckle. This allows the joint to bend without interfering with the bandage's position. To properly apply a fingertip bandage, first stick one end of the bandage to the finger, then pull it over the fingernail and secure the flaps in place. There are also bandages especially designed for specific uses such as larger body parts. Spray bandage products are an effective solution for bleeding control and protection for smaller cuts or larger abrasions. Two of the most important items in any first aid kit are gauze pads and gauze rolls. Be sure your first aid kit has a variety of different types and sizes. Square gauze pads come in different sizes so use the appropriate size to cover a wound. Use a gauze roller bandage to secure the dressing in place. You can even use first aid tape to secure all four sides of a square gauze pad. There are a wide variety of first aid tapes, each designed for certain purposes. These are latex-free elastic adhesive tapes, ideal for securing bandages and binding wounds. Basic first aid tape is found in almost any first aid kit or cabinet. It can stick easily and can be torn without scissors. These are latex-free, waterproof tape, ideal for securing bandages that you might get wet. What's cool about tri-cut tape is that it's cut in three different sizes. Cloth athletic tape or sports tape is used for binding joints such as wrapping an ankle and can be used for attaching sports safety equipment like shin guards. Use first aid scissors to cut tape or bandages at an appropriate length. Here are some examples of different first aid scissors and shears. These scissors are designed to protect the skin while removing clothing or cutting bandages, wraps, or tapes. Impaled object. For minor impaled objects like a splinter, use tweezers to help remove the object. You can use specific products like Splinter Out. It's better than a needle because it's sterile and has a point that is designed for loosening and pulling out splinters. There are a variety of tweezers to choose from. Some even come with a magnifying glass. Major external bleeding. Major bleeding can be life-threatening as it reduces the blood flow to the vital organs and can result in death. Severe injuries require special consideration. These products are designed to stem heavy blood loss. Direct pressure to the area to control the bleeding. If bandage becomes blood soaked, do not remove it and simply add another dressing in place. Here we have an abdominal pad, we have trauma dressings, we have the blood stopper, and my favorite is a pressure bandage, which is a dressing and a bandage all in one. Extensive internal or external bleeding can cause the person to go into shock. The loss of blood leads to low blood volume and decreased oxygen supply to the vital organs. Elevate the legs above the level of the heart. Cover the person with a solar or emergency blanket to maintain normal body temperature. An emergency blanket can reflect back 90% of the body's heat. Closed wounds. In the case of a minor closed wound, cold can help control both pain and swelling. Our instant cold compress temporarily relieves minor pain and swelling from bumps, bruises, sprains, aches, and sore joints. It is conveniently disposable with no pre-chilling required for quick effective relief. To use an instant cold pack, first shake, squeeze to break the inner bag, shake to mix, and apply. 
No barrier between the instant cold pack and skin is needed. Cold can also be used to treat a bone, muscle, or joint injury. To review how to use an instant cold pack, simply shake, squeeze to break the inner bag so the contents can mix, and apply. The elastic ice securing wrap is ideal for holding ice or hot or cold compresses in place over an injury. Apply a cold compress for 15 minutes every hour. Immobilize the injured body part to prevent further damage. There are a variety of splinting products that are designed to immobilize specific body parts. Triangular bandages are commonly found in first aid kits and can be used to provide immobilization and support to an upper body injury. Slings. For upper body injuries, you can apply a sling. Place a triangular bandage underneath the injured arm. The top point of the triangle should be towards the injured elbow. Wrap bandage securely to support the injured body part. Tie both ends of the bandage behind the neck. Twist or pin excess bandage around the elbow. Make sure the sling covers the entire arm with fingers slightly exposed. For extra support, secure a broad transport bandage to stabilize the sling. A latex-free elastic wrap is another product used to provide immobilization and support. Wrap the bandage from below the injury working upwards while maintaining tension throughout. Use the clips provided to pin the bandage in place. This is called a SAM splint. It's a type of rigid splint. Here's what it looks like. And it can be used to splint different body parts. Here are some examples. A SAM splint is a pliable splint that can be shaped to the contours of injured limbs. For an arm injury, simply place the splint under the arm and secure the arm in place by using tape or any other bandages. You can even splint the arm from the top and bottom and secure in place. For a leg injury, place the bandages under the leg. Apply the splint on both sides of the leg. Bandage the splint in place. Cross the ankle, go under the foot, and tie on top. Emergency air splints are highly portable and easy to use. For an arm injury, simply slide the air splint over the injured body part. Pull the air valve to inflate. When secure, push the air valve closed to seal. Use the same steps for the leg splint. There are also splints designed for smaller body parts, such as fingers. Most finger splints are used by placing the splint under the finger and bandage in place. There is also a finger splint that you can use to cover the top and bottom of the finger and bandage as usual. Eye injury. Place the casualty on their back. Do not attempt to remove the object. Place sterile dressings around the object to help support the object in place. Secure the dressing with a bandage. If there is a foreign body such as sand, dust, or chemicals in the eye, flush the eye with water. If the object is chemical, flush continuously until EMS arrives. If flushing one eye only, position the affected eye downward so that the foreign object does not come into contact with the other eye. If the object cannot be removed, cover both eyes to discourage any eye movement and transport the person to the hospital. Here is a variety of eye wash products, each designed for a different purpose.
Our eye wash relieves irritation, burning, and discomfort by removing loose foreign material. Here we have a wall-mounted dual eye wash station. Our eye care pack includes sterile eye pads, eye wash, and first aid tape. Together, they provide cleansing and a sterile covering for eye injuries. A Haas eye wash station is portable and gravity operated. It provides flushing for a full 15 minutes. Burns A first degree burn damages only the top layer of skin and can be painful and may swell. A second degree burn damages both layers of the skin. The burned skin is red and has blisters that may be open and leaking fluid. Scarring may occur. A third degree burn destroys both layers of the skin as well as nerves, blood vessels, fat, muscle, and bone. The skin may be charred black or even white. Cool the burn with water for at least 15 minutes until the pain stops. Once you've cooled the burn, apply a burn cream to relieve pain and prevent infection. To further protect the area, cover the burn with a dry, non-stick sterile dressing. Burns are one of the most serious types of injuries. Therefore, we have a vast selection of burn treatment products. Now we will take a moment to show you their purpose. First Aid Burn Creams incorporate both antiseptic and healing properties in a single product. Burn kits contain the basic necessities for specific burn care emergencies. Our kits include burn dressing, first aid tape and sterile gauze rolls, exam quality gloves, and nickel plated scissors. Heat shields and fire blankets are wrapped around a burn victim. They are used to stop the burn progression, ease the pain, and protect against airborne contamination. The American Red Cross Burn Emergency Responder Packs include essential supplies to treat and protect minor burns. Its lightweight design makes it easy to grab, pack, and carry. Our burn spray and burn pump spray with aloe vera work to relieve the pain of minor burns, abrasions, scalds, even sunburns, while also disinfecting the area. Burn gels are used to soothe and cool minor burns. Gels form a protective sterile layer while moisturizing the skin for fast pain relief. Sterile burn dressings come in various sizes and help to prevent burn progression without using water. A burn dressing protects from contamination while it cools, comforts, and relieves pain. Hypothermia Hypothermia is caused by exposure to the cold to the degree that the body cannot keep itself warm. In hypothermia, body temperature drops below 35 degrees Celsius or 95 degrees Fahrenheit. As the person gets colder, the heart begins to beat irregularly and eventually stops. Change the person's clothing only if necessary and have them sit near a heat source like a fireplace or a stove. Give warm liquids if the person is alert, preferably non-alcoholic and decaffeinated drinks. Wrap the person in blankets or heat pads. Do not warm too quickly as it can cause heart problems. Frostbite. Depending on the circumstances and time of exposure, frostbite may occur by itself or along with hypothermia. Frostbite can occur in body parts that are exposed to extreme cold. The water in the skin freezes and swells, causing cells to die. Deep frostbite can lead to the loss of body parts. Gradually warm the body part by gently immersing the affected area in warm water until it appears and feels normal. Place gauze or cotton between the fingers and toes. Bandage the area with dry sterile dressings. And see a doctor. Ideal for cold weather activities, our sports heat body warmer provides safe and instant heat in convenient, air-activated packages that fit easily into pockets, liners, and wraps. The Ready Wash self-heating washcloths feature a self-warming system that allows the washcloths to heat without the need of a heat source. The super soft cloths are hypoallergenic, latex, and alcohol-free. For more information on CPR and first aid procedures, check out our comprehensive, full-length DVD series on first aid and CPR. Thank you for watching. 
We hope you enjoyed our presentation. Please remember that this information is not a substitute for live training and it is highly recommended that you contact American CPR Training for first aid and CPR courses in your area. The preceding presentation was brought to you by FirstAidMart.com. Guess what we sell? A lot more than first aid. First aid kits, CPR supply, emergency and safety equipment for all your needs. Shop online or please call toll free at 1-888-6-BANDAGE. And American CPR Training, offering the most entertaining, affordable, accurate, time and cost efficient CPR, first aid, AED and other safety training classes in the US, Canada and Mexico. America's favorite CPR, AED and first aid training, half the time, half the price and twice the fun.